Hi guys, welcome to the Wallaway Imran Nawawal, and I wanted to talk to you about a very interesting uh, documentary on Tony Parker called Tony Parker, The Final Shot. Tony Parker, four-time NBA champion, finals MVP, EuroLeague champion, uh, European Championship, he won in the European Championships, uh, multiple-time All-Star, overall great player, all-time uh, great pointer. So what is it that led to Tony Parker's success? What are some things that we can take away from watching this documentary? So one of the things that stood out to me from the beginning was how young Tony Parker was when he joined the NBA. He was 17 years old when he played his first game. I want you to think about that. 17-year-old import from France. He comes from a completely different and foreign culture. And not only does he play in America, where does he play? In Texas, San Antonio, Texas, under Greg Popovich. He plays under all-time great Greg Popovich, obviously not an all-time great them, but Greg Popovich, military mindset, very strict, very disciplinarian. So imagine you at 17 having to play for a professional team with grown, strong, big men who have already won an NBA championship. Imagine the pressure. Imagine the prestige that the that the stand, the status that the Spurs have. But just focus on the pressure. Focus on all the things he would have to do to impress his coach, to impress his fellow teammates, right? So he's the youngest. Uh, at that time, he's the youngest starting point guard in NBA history. He's 21 years old when he wins his first NBA championship. I want you all to think about that. 21 years old as a starter, right? Younger starter when he becomes a starter. And at 21, he's an NBA champion, right? And he's not even from America. So just imagine all the pressure. Imagine all the sacrifice of his ego, the sacrifice of uh, his tendencies, the willingness to adjust, the willingness to take criticism, which is very difficult, right? At times, he would talk about how he would almost be in tears as a young man at the Spurs because Pop was just laying into it. Pop was chewing him out. Uh, but of course, that led to him becoming a better player, and it eventually led to him earning the trust of his head coach. So what are some of the things he did, right? He sacrificed his ego. He was willing to learn. He followed instructions. He put an extra time to improve his game. Uh, he was willing to take criticism. And he did so much more, stay in health, stay healthy, stay in shape, work on his weaknesses. It's not very easy, right? And the reason I wanted to do this was there's been a lot of criticism on Tony Parker recently, but I'm not enough credit has been given to him. So I wanted to kind of balance that up. Another thing that was very impressive was when he's talking about in this documentary, uh, the relationship he had with his father, Tony Parker Sr., and how that led to his love for basketball. He would accompany his dad and watch his dad play in France. And his favorite teams at the time were the Spurs, coincidentally, and the Bulls. And he would imagine these rivalries, right? But he looked up to his father. His father was uh, someone he looked up to, someone who was there, someone who taught him nice values and nice gave him ambition, uh, but his also, father also talked to him about the value of sacrificing and working hard for your love and for your interest. Then Tony Parker, as a young man, joins a French academy where he meets Ronnie Toria, former NBA player, uh, Boris Diaz, his former NBA championship teammate on the Spurs. And what separates Tony Parker is this intense drive. He's driven. He's, he's a good student. He's a very disciplined. He's there early. He's putting in an extra time. He's working out more than everybody else. And from an early age and from early age, people knew his mindset was different, right? So we see, we see someone who's willing to take criticism, willing to let go of his ego. And he's also willing to put in the time and effort it takes to be a great player. Okay, now let's fast forward into year 16 or year, year 17. He tears his quadricep, quadricep tendon. And as people imagine, it could have been uh, career and the injury. But from the get-go, he was determined to, nope, this is not going to stop me. In fact, I'm going to come back stronger. This is year 16, 17. It's 34, 35, 36. And the initial diagnosis was 8 to 10 months, but he comes back in 7 months. Why? Because he worked his butt up, right? He worked hard. He changed his habits, which are so hard to do at an advanced age. He's going to bed early. He's training more. He's being disciplined. He's eating right, okay? So you see all of these different things. Why is he a four-time NBA champion? Why is it NBA Finals MVP? It's because of his mindset, which often doesn't get spoken about. Uh, what else do we have in this? So when he's retired and he's done, actually, let's go back earlier. So 2013, they make it to the finals and they lose as the Spurs. First time back since 2007. This could crush some people. What happens? That very summer, the thing that has eluded him the longest time, which was winning a European championship, with his teammates, they finally do it and they beat Spain, their their arch nemesis, 
their arrival, the the mountain top that they've never been able to uh, climb and conquer. And they finally beat Spain and they are European champions, right? And then they come back in 2014 and they win the NBA championship or he wins the NBA championship with the Spurs. So just think about all this that he's had to do to overcome. He's He makes all his goals. He's a super successful at the American level in the NBA. He's super successful at the uh, European level with Team France. But that's not it. Once he retires, he buys Asvel, the French team. He buys the men and women's team. And they're not very, they're a prestigious team because of their history. But at the time he buys them, they're not being really well. He turns them around and he makes the men and the women's team, or he helps them become championship team. They win the championship again. He's celebrated. He gets some type of like French Medal of Honor award in France. You see, first, one of the few times that I've seen tears in his eyes, he gets emotional talking about winning with France, talking about his father being in the audience. I wanted to make this video to talk about his accolades, to give him his flowers. He's been criticized lately in, in the media and, uh, with certain former NBA players, and often he's not regarded as an all-time great by self, but you see the accolades. You see the sacrificing of ego. You see uh, putting his body through hell, uh, rehabbing and coming back from a career in the, you know, uh, at an injury at an advanced age, helping his European team, his French team, win a championship helping his NBA team win a championship, buying prestigious French teams and helping them become champions. He's an all-time great. He's an all-time leader. He's a very strategic mind. So I highly recommend everyone to watch this documentary, great documentary, and we go from there. Enjoy it. Like and subscribe.